It is basketball tournament time. Kyler Staley from the Hoosier.com joins us. How are you, sir? I am doing great. It is a, uh, you know, conference tournaments are getting started. Um, I really love this week of the season. Um, I, I, I like to picture it as kind of like a appetizer for the uh, NCAA tournament. So um, got a lot of basketball going on. It's, it's about to be really, really fun. Uh, it's already, yeah, already underway for uh, every every conference is underway now. Um, is that right? Ohio State at Iowa today at two. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, the Big Ten. Is that the first game of the day in the Big yep. Ten? Michigan Rutgers is the first game. I don't know why this stupid thing doesn't have a very, very important first game today. I will say <laughs> that with Michigan and Rutgers. Is okay. So we were talking about this. There it is. Yeah. Does the Let, noon starting at noon on on uh, on on the BTN, as Dave would say for you kids, it's on the BTN. But uh, yeah, and and why is that game so important, Kyler? I mean, so you look at those. I mean, they're probably the two bubble teams. You know, you can throw Penn State in there as well from the Big Ten, um, and of course they play each other. So you kind of look at it as a uh, you know loser goes home type of thing, literally. Um, but is know, Michigan even still a bubble team, man? They they've been I would a bubble team so. for so, so long that the, I, the I, conversations I, I've been having with people is I like to compare <laughs> them to Indiana last year. I think they're the Indiana this year. I think they come in and you know they got to win a few games. Um, you know they 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 really improved towards the end of the Big Ten season, um, which was the opposite of what Indiana did last year. But nonetheless, <laughs> like you go in, um. You go into the Big Ten tournament, they have to win a few games. They obviously have to win this game versus Rutgers. They probably have to knock out Purdue to feel safely in the Big Ten – or the NCAA tournament. But I'd like to compare them to Indiana last year. I think they're fighting desperately, and I think they are the most desperate team in the Big Ten tournament this year. You don't think Rutgers fits that? Like, I feel like both teams you could probably categorize put in yeah. that category because Rutgers is – a couple – two or three weeks ago, I think you say Rutgers is safely in. And yes. now they've lost to Minnesota, they lost to Northwestern, they lost to Michigan. They've won one of their last four games. So if they lose this, and I know we don't look at as much as the what have you done for me lately with the with the you know net and RPI and all that, all that jazz with the NCAA tournament, but I I almost I don't I don't know. I, this I don't, is I feel like the winner might get in and then the loser is going to the NIT. It could be. I, I see Rutgers as the team. If they lose, I think they're just going to be sweating on Selection Sunday. Yeah. Um. Because they they have had some good wins, you know. Uh, but like you said, they they have went one and four the last you know five games and everything. But um, they'll definitely be sweating. I can see Rutgers even if they lose. I see them squeaking into maybe a first four game okay. somewhere around there. Um. But you know, I, I think if Michigan were to lose, I think they're out. I mean, you just can't. You know, what is it? They have seventeen wins on the season, something like that. Um, you just you just can't get into the um, NCAA tournament with that kind of record. But um, it'll be interesting. I mean, I like that we have this game to start off the day. It's going to be really good. It's going to be a dogfight, I will say that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And and um, the, the bracket side that Indiana is on, a little uh, upset there yesterday. Probably Hoosier fans would rather have seen Nebraska win that game just so Nebraska would have been playing – Maryland to to either beat them or wear them down a little bit more because Nebraska had been playing so well. But was Nebraska worn worn down from winning those, you know, making that late season run? Could have been. I mean, honestly, I look at it kind of the opposite way. I think Indiana fans are a little bit more happy that uh, Minnesota won just the way that uh, Nebraska has been playing lately. I, I I we we did a, a Big Ten bracket pre or breakdown at the Hoosier.com, and I kind of mentioned, like, I think Nebraska was the one team this year that you didn't want to play in the Big Ten tournament. Obviously, I was wrong because Minnesota took care of that. And uh, But, um, but you know, yeah, Indiana, like, you look at their side of the bracket, they've uh, – I would say they've probably got a little favorable side. Um, pretty, you know, winnable route to at least win the first game and make it to Saturday. Um, it's going to be tough if they didn't do end up playing Maryland, which I think they will. I don't think Minnesota has enough, you know, speed and enough talent to match up with Maryland. But uh, Indiana's got to uh, – they've, they've got a chance to have a little revenge game versus Maryland. You look back at last game, you know, Maryland just kind of, you know, ate their defensive line. Jalen Huchafino went like 1 of 14 that game. Um, I think it'll be a little bit of a different, different result this time around. I think Indiana will be a little bit more prepared. Plus, you look at Maryland, they have not done great in a neutral side. They have not done great on the road this year. 
So they're probably the most questionable team, I would say, in the Big Ten because you really don't know what you're going to get from them. But uh, either way, Indiana's got a very winnable, you know, route to, to get to Saturday at least. The thing is, Indiana has to come out playing defense like their hair's on fire right now. They they can't like come out w- with this comfortable, comfortable, comfortable stance because, in my mind, they have to win one game in this Big Ten tournament to secure that four seed, four line. They're looking at the the matrix, uh, which is the combination of all of the the. I don't even know how many it is that they may, maybe they consider some, they shouldn't, I don't know, but it's, it's pretty, it, it's pretty close. They're, they're the second to last four seed right now uh, on that. And I, a single loss might dip them below that uh, a win and a loss. They break even, they're not going anywhere. And uh, they, they, they stay on that four line, which is I think where they want to be. Yeah, I, I think right now they're pretty solid at the four line. I, I think a loss there, you know, depending on what happens, I think they could drop to a five. Um, I would say probably two wins, um, winning on Friday, winning on Saturday, still keeps them out of four line. I think the only way that they would even have a shot at the three seed is if they um, if they win the entire Big Ten tournament, and that just depends on what everybody else does around them. But right now, I think you can safely say Indiana's around the three and five range. I don't think they'll ever, they'll drop down to a six or even below that. They definitely won't get higher than a three, even if that's possible. So um, I, I, it's a good spot for Indiana. I think this is kind of where you would you know predict them to be at the beginning of the season. You know, despite all the injuries they've really battled through. Um, a lot of adjustments have been made throughout the season. And the fact that they're still, you know, a top three team in the Big Ten with Xavier Johnson being out most of the season, Ray Thompson being hurt, Jalen Hushavino being hurt for a little bit. Um, it's really impressive by this Indiana team. And it just shows the show that this team's, you know, willing to fight like Trace Jackson Davis has mentioned quite a few times in the past recent games. If Indiana's going to make a run in both the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament, what is the number one factor to you because to me that they cannot get four points from their bench like that's I mean but I don't I don't see where they're going to get that other production from so I mean is there something else to that you think would be a bigger key this time of year because I just when you look at some of the production they're getting off of the bench it's it's a little bit concerning when you head into a time when you're playing so many games in so many days yeah, I think there's a lot of factors there. One, you can obviously say the defensive end. Um, that's where Indiana is definitely going to, you know, stay in games like they have done mostly for the entire season. They've really got to lock down on that end. They got to bring the intensity and they got to be disciplined. You know, you can't have Trey Galloway and Jalen Huchafino, those two guys especially, get in foul trouble. You know, that that can be very dampering because you've got Tamar Bates come off the bench. And he's another factor, honestly, when you look at it. He's got to have, you know, he's got to have solid production. He's got to be the number one guy off the bench. He's got to score. He, he showed a little bit towards the end of the Michigan game. He made some big shots, but he's got to step up in a major way if Indiana wants to succeed. Um, and then, obviously, you look at the seniors. You know, you know, Trace Jackson Davis, he's going to get his. Um, he's going to be the motor that's going to drive this ship or whatever. But Miller Cobb, Ray Thompson, they got to play like seniors. You know, they can't be taking any plays off. Um, they've got to stay aggressive. You know, they got to make the hustle plays. They've got to be seniors. They've got to lead this team. And then Jalen Huchavino, hopefully, you know, his shots can fall. Um, that's another thing, you know, like I mentioned, there's been games where he's kind of disappeared a little bit, you know, that Maryland game, one of 14. Um, but there's been games where he drops 35 at Purdue. So you just don't know. Um, he is a freshman still, but, uh, I think there's multiple things you can look at. Um, it's kind of a perfect storm in a way. Um, but Indiana, for the most part, they just got to come out engaged. They got to throw the first punch, and they just got to stay engaged throughout the full 40 minutes of the contest. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, Indiana is going to have to slow down if it ends up being Northwestern uh, that they end up playing. They've got to find a way to slow those guards down. Um, uh, it, it, that's been a, a problem for Indiana – well, since Xavier Johnson went down because they don't have, you know, that that duo that they had. Nothing wrong with Trey Galloway. It's just that, hey, you can't I, – I, you can't expect him to to shut down Boo Booey. Uh, that's, that's not going to happen. Uh, but 
also Nebraska or Nebraska, Northwestern also does not have a Trace Jackson Davis. So Indiana has just got they just have to play the defense that they've been playing that they can play. Uh, it's when they don't do that, Iowa, for example, at home, uh, just letting people run wild and let them getting on those letting them get on those runs. That's when Indiana gets in into trouble. Yeah, and they they've got to be disciplined, like I mentioned. Um, you know, they got to avoid the foul troubles. You know, Trey Galloway going down that Michigan game. You know, it, it ended up you know being fine, but at the same time, it was like you know you got a starting guard in there, and you had to bring in Tamar Bates, who's just been very inconsistent this entire season. Um, it like a, yeah, it's discipline at the end of the day. Um, it's being aggressive, but not overly aggressive. Um, is communicating on defense. Um, that's a big thing with them. Um, you know, you got the fast guards like Boo Booey and, you know, the Maryland guards or whatever. They're likely to beat Jalen and Trey off the dribble. So, you know, Trace Jackson Davis has got to be ready to, you know, contest at the rim, race Thompson and everything. Miller has got to be a solid perimeter defender like we've seen he can be um, throughout the season. So, um, it, it starts on the defensive end before anything. You know, the offense will come for Indiana, but defensively they've got to be locked down and they've got to be disciplined. Here's a question that I feel like is going to potentially ruffle some feathers, but I'm going to get mixed reaction on this. How much stock do you put in Indiana's performance in the Big Ten tournament and probably specifically the Maryland game? Like, because – I just don't put I, I just don't put a lot like to gauge for, what they're gonna do for the NCAA tournament because I don't put a lot of stock into it. I mean I I don't I just don't it's just not as important to me, right? Like I because and, and I think part of this plays in if if Indiana had won their last five games, it probably doesn't matter. Nobody cares, right? But because they've gone win loss, win loss, win loss, win, or however that worked out. I feel like there's probably – like you want to see them play well, like to get them get a win, and then whatever happens after that Maryland game just kind of happens. Like do you think that's fair? Yeah. I mean, it, it, that is a tough question because if you're talking about, you know, how they play, you know, versus Maryland or Minnesota, whoever they're going to play, you know, you know, depending on like, you know, do they play good or bad, you know, do you think that will translate into the NCAA tournament? That's, that's a little – that's a tough question for me. Um, I kind of look at it from like a team goal, you know, standpoint. You know, Mike Woodson, the team, has talked about winning a Big Ten championship. And if they're dead serious about winning this Big Ten tournament, then they will come out and play like they want to. They won't be looking towards the NCAA tournament. You know, they're safe for the first time in five years. They don't have to worry about being on the bubble. They, they can't have that mental, you know, mindset. They can't come out relaxed, you know. They have to play like they're trying to win a championship. And like they've mentioned all year, Mike Woodson said he came back to win a Big Ten championship to win the Big Ten tournament. Trace Jackson Davis even mentioned it, um, you know, at the senior speech. Um, they have to come out and gauge. They have to show that, they, that they're taking this seriously and they're not, um, they're not looking ahead to the NCAA tournament. But I wonder, I mean, where is, where is your mindset? Because, yes, you, you're playing in a tournament, the Big Ten tournament. And so you want to give your all and win, but it is not the most important thing. And it's not the most important thing on the, on the immediate horizon because the NCAA tournament is, is right on the heels, which is that's where you, that's what matters most. It's not that this doesn't matter at all, but that's what matters most. That's, that's where you can truly leave a mark. Now winning a big 10 tournament championship, would absolutely leave a mark because it's never happened in Indiana. Um, but there, ever since, you know, the days of Bob Knight, he hated the big 10 tournament, voted against it for years, which with good reason, uh, they are a waste of, they're a waste of energy for these guys. I mean, we, we've got the, the greatest sports event in the world to me, the men's NCAA basketball tournament. And I think it is, I, I think it would be so much better if we didn't have these college tournaments the weekend before you just especially the big 10 they just played a grueling 20 game schedule the big 12 just played you know that went through that grueling beating the heck each out of each other um so here's what i what did i what was the idea i came up with um <laughs> the top four teams don't play in the big 10 tournament yeah, exactly. You came up with this idea? 
Yes. <laughs> The, the top, the, it, hey, if you want to, you're welcome to play in the Big Ten tournament, but the top four teams just don't have to do it. Yeah. They're already they're already in the NCAA tournament, and we're going to rest because. But but see, this is just a money grab for everybody, and that's what it's about. It, it it's all about nothing other than that, and I think that that would be an absolutely great idea. That the only the top now you couldn't do that for every conference, and then it goes well. How you decide who you can do it for and who you can't? Well, I, you can pretty much do it for all the P five conferences. Even as bad as a, the ACC is this year, you could still do it for the ACC this year. It still or, works. Or what they Wait, could you're, do? You're, you're already you're already caveating my my great idea. No, I'm not caveating <laughs> it. I'm just I'm saying. Kidding. Uh, what? The I think the easiest solution would be if they just did it like they do either the women's tournament or they do it like they do the some of these mid majors. Just move it, give you a two week separation. I feel like that that way everybody gets the same amount of rest. They're not, They're not gonna, gonna do, do that. that because the, the money is there. They get a lot of opportunity to air the A Sun, the Horizon, the Mac, all that stuff the week before. I don't even know when these tournaments are, but yeah. and then they have the the major tournaments the week before. I just would like to see it on a level playing field where they're all playing at the same time. Never gonna happen, but that would be a better solution. 